So, Gabor, when we sat on a different stage, but a similar stage, a year ago, um, we were asking the question, Hungary has weathered all the storms, it's still growing, but can it continue? And, of course, beautiful Hungary continues to surprise on the upside. We've got some questions about that, but first of all, Germany, of course, is forecast not to have a great boom year in 2020. It didn't have a particularly great boom year in 2019. Just let's come to the topic specifically from that angle. How do you compare Hungary's economic performance with Germany's economic performance? <clears throat> well, a year ago, when I, I still remember we had this discussion, and uh, our estimates back there for the 2019 growth of the Hungarian economy was uh, around 4%. Nobody believed this. Nobody. Uh, and uh, we also added that we will need some uh, economic stimulus package to achieve 4%. But then, by end of March, we've, we've seen that we no longer need that. We nevertheless introduced uh, a stimulus package that we call Growth Protection uh, Action Plan. And now we see that we will end up 2019 close to 5% uh, again. Uh, so it's a strong growth. But it's, it's not just the growth itself, but, uh, but there was, a, there was a, a change in the structure of economy over past years for Hungary. Uh, if I look, and I have detailed data for the first nine months of 2019, 71% of our GDP comes from services. And only less than 21% comes from industry. So, so we are shifting away from being an assembly-based, export-based uh, country to be like a more diverse economy that is not just driven by exports, but is also driven by investments and, uh, and, and, and driven by consumption. So out of the 4.9% uh, growth in the first nine months, 2.8 percentage points come from consumption. Uh, so the other element, and I will not dodge the bullet on the German economy, that is quite new, and, and this, this has happened uh, first time in the recent history of Hungarian economy, is that, that our industrial uh, performance totally diverged from German. Uh, in the first 11 months, German industry declined by more than 4%, while Hungarian industry increased more than 6%. So even within the industrial sectors, you're on a counter-cyclical path to what most people would assume would be the external economy that principally drives your own economy. Yeah, and, and, and one of the factors is that, uh, that, that we, are, we, are, we are still, our industry is still dependent on Germany. Uh, uh, this is our, our far the largest export market. Uh, but, but we are also diversifying our export markets. In addition, despite the significant increase in wages, which then increased uh, uh, savings, increased consumptions uh, over the past years, uh, the wage-adjusted labor productivity in, uh, in manufacturing is still highest uh, in Hungary, in Europe. Mm. So we, we, we still have, an, we are still an attractive place for foreign investments. But what's interesting too is that whilst wages have been increasing, and we'll come on to the demographic point, which is linked to this in a moment, um, you've been cutting taxes. Yes. Is that, is that going to be a, a continuous main plank of your policy? Well, our co the, the corporate income taxes are as low as they could be of 9%. So that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think there's much, okay, more, much more room without getting, get, getting in, into too much trouble with, uh, uh, with, with, with the personal income taxes, a flat 15%. There are plans to decrease that further. But what we have made an agreement in 2016 for it's a six-year agreement uh, with trade unions, employers, uh, uh, associations. Uh, it's a six-year of age agreement. Basically, the essence of this agreement is that, that the, the minimum wages will gradually and are gradually increasing, and at the same time, social contribution payable by employers is gradually decreasing. So that, that actually uh, relieves uh, or, or mitigates a little bit of the effect of, of, of wage inflation. Uh, but it also uh, increases the personal income of, uh, uh, of, of individuals and increased savings. And increase Which in turn increases consumption. Exactly. But now let's, we, let's talk about the demographic question there because the, the, the concern has been, of course, a declining 
or, or, or stable population and, and therefore the impact that has on the available workforce. Uh, obviously, the government has taken measures to try to mitigate that, but by definition, it's not a problem you can solve overnight. So how are you measuring the success of your countermeasures, if you like, on the demographic side? Look, with demographic package, we introduced the, announced the demographic package in February last year. Uh, our prime minister did it and, uh, and introduced the measures uh, uh, gradually over the year. I mean, this is a long-term package. I mean, to measure its effects will probably take, year, take 10 years. So, so, so when you men mention the labor availability issue, then, then I see short-term, mid-term, and long-term solution. Uh, reversing demographic trends is, is obviously the long-term solution mm. uh, to it. The short-term solution is if, if we are comparing ourselves with 2010. 2010 unemployment was uh, over to well over 10%. Uh, in Hungary, that was one of the highest in EU, uh, and, uh, and now it's 3.5%, which is one of the lowest in, in, in EU. However, if we look at the productivity, productivity in 2010, our productivity uh, percentage, or, or uh, I'm sorry, employment uh, uh, ratio was the far the lowest in Europe. Now, with this improvement in unemployment, uh, the employment rate only got us to the middle of the pack in the EU. And what we did, we benchmarked ourselves with uh, Sweden, who has the highest employment rate, and identified, actually, the groups of population which we believe uh, we have potential reserves. We think we have roughly 8 to 10 percent labor reserves still among inactive people. Mm. These, are, these are age categories of uh, 55 and above, so retired people. Uh, young females, young mothers, okay. 30s, and young people, uh, uh, age category 18 and 25. Mm. For, for retired people, we uh, introduced uh, a measure from 1st of January last year. Anybody employing a retired person is, is, is free of any social uh, contribution payable. Only a 15% personal income tax is payable by individuals. And we already see an effect there. And if I were a Hungarian woman, which you may note I'm not, um, <laughs> it would be nice to be a Hungarian woman, I think. Um, how many children do I need to have in order never to pay tax? Is it three? Uh, Four percent. And, 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 and we, are, we are evaluating the potential to, to, to actually introducing that to women with three children and more. But that's, that's still under consideration. So I pay tax at 4% if I have... If you have four children, you don't pay any taxes. No, no, taxes, at no, taxes, at no taxes at all. No taxes at all. So that can have actually one of the side effects of this is, is, is encouraging mothers to return to the, to the uh, labor market. The other element of the... Well, it's encouraging them to do something else as well, but yeah. perhaps we won't go into that. <laughs> but um, they are beyond that point. When they are, they are, they are, are <laughs> agreed, yes, yes. They, they, you don't want to get the cart before the horse. Now, we, we sadly don't have a, a great deal of time, so I just want to turn... Obviously, the story on the whole is, is a very positive one, and yeah. nobody would seek to deny that. Um, but let's leave aside things in the external environment that you can't influence, export markets and wider European global economies and so on. What are the greatest internal risks do you face now when, you, when you're looking at strategy for the finance ministry going forward? What, what do you worry about internally? That's, uh, uh, I mean, one of the, the, the internal ones, we need, we need to address demographic issues and we need to address, we need to mobilize labor. And also, I, I forgot to mention the, the, the midterm solution of labor availability, and that is automation, replacing technologies that are highly labor intensive because labor was so cheap in the 90s and 2000s mm. that was deployed to Hungary. If that we can replace with more robotized automated technology, that can actually address. On the upside risk, so the downside risk is clearly employment uh, or, or labor availability. Upside uh, side risk are, are uh, investment ratio uh, is among the highest in Europe. We'll end up uh, the investment levels will be around 29% of the GDP by the end of 2019, which will be the second mm. highest in, in EU. And I think that, that gives a relative comfort of uh, maintaining an around 4% growth going forward. Okay, so, so the risks are upside risks. Okay, well, that's even more positive. Really quickly, there was a very eye-catching initiative um, launching a whole new retail bond market called Map Plus. Yeah. 
Um, just tell us quickly what that is, because I, I read about it, and it seemed to me something really innovative and interesting. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a five-year bond with a, a, a gradually increasing interest coupon. It starts from 3.5%, and it goes uh, up to 6 in the last year. So it's a, it's a very attractive uh, bond. Uh, the, this is clearly dedicated for households only, for private individuals, so no, no uh, uh, institutional investors can buy them. And the purpose of it is to tap on the increasing savings of Hungarian households. I mean, Hungarian, mm. uh, the, the, the savings rate in 2018 was 12% uh, on average of disposable income in Hungary. That's the highest in the EU. That's excellent. So, 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 so we are tapping on that. Uh, we are reducing the exposure to uh, foreign investors, well, foreign institutional investors when it comes to financing. I mean, 2017, uh, 2007, I'm sorry, uh, the, the, the ratio of, uh, of household financing in the, in the state debt financing was 5%. Now it's 25%. And we think, we think there is more potential there. So and what we you... did with the five-year bond, uh, the reason why we constructed it is that, that it lengthens the renewal pe period. Right. The renewal period was too short. Uh, for the for the retail bonds. So what you're not taking off your citizens in tax, they're lending to you by buying your bonds. Exactly. Excellent. Well, I think that's a very positive note to end on. Gabor, I'm sorry we don't have longer to talk. Thank you very much for joining us again. Great Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.